Grace and peace be to each of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is indeed the Christ, the Anointed One of God. And let us pray. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the day that you have given to us, a day that you have made, and we rejoice and we are glad in it. We praise you, Father, and we bless you, and we glorify you. We're gathered here today to worship you as a corporate body. We pray, Heavenly Father, that now, at this time, you would be present among us to lead and guide and direct and teach and nurture us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, to say the least, I have heard a little bit about the two sermons that I have given over the last two weeks. Let's just say I have been peppered with questions. Either that or people have rolled their eyes and said, what has happened to Pastor Kathleen? I'm seeing the looks on your faces right now and you're going, yep, that's what we were thinking. <laughs> Which is why today, today's a little different in that I'd like to hear what your questions are because your questions are important. No question is silly. And uh, we just need to talk about, you know, what has been discussed or talked about. And, you know, since this isn't normally an open forum for discussion, you, I just got to make space for you to do that. Uh, one of the things about being a pastor is, you know, a pastor is a shepherd. Shepherds care for their flock. I care for you. And because of that, you know, even though... Uh, the last two weeks, the uh, messages may have seemed a little strange. Uh, I want to give you that forum to ask questions. And uh, so ask, what questions do you have? Obviously, you haven't given me, I've only received one question in advance. I'll get to that one later. Uh, you know, just ask me your questions. What kind of questions do you have about the, about the topic? about last week. I mean, the two su subjects were the coming deception. So what are your questions? Carol? Well, you already got one of mine. Okay, well, should we start with that one or should we start well, with somebody else's? Well, somebody else will do. Why do we need to know about the aliens? Yeah. Why do we need to know about aliens? The fact of the matter is, this partially goes with your question. Carol's question is, how did we get from aliens to Gibeonite, to the Gibeonites? How did we make that bridge? Why do we need to know about aliens? Well, here's what we, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that there will come a time of deep deception. Deep deception. Great deception. It's going to overwhelm the earth. And the reason for the messages that we had was in preparation for that time, which may be sooner than we think, according to Tom Horn and Chris Putnam, who think it could be uh, the disclosure of aliens and ETs, extraterrestrials, may be as soon as this year. And uh, that being the case, uh, we need to know in advance so that we don't get snookered, because there are going to be a whole lot of people getting snookered. Uh, you know, the enemy, the devil, can disguise himself as an angel of light or anything else that he wants to disguise himself as. The book that I, well, I've read five, four or five books, but the one, that, the latest one, Exo Vaticana, um, by Putnam and Horn, their scholarship is excellent, absolutely excellent. Um, I am glad I have a science background to understand what they were talking about. Um, of course, my, my background isn't in astrophysics <laughs> or anything like that, but, but still, I'm glad that there's a science background there. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that as they have scoured decades of information, decades of information, they have come to realize that First off, even though there have been UFO sightings around the globe, okay, there has never, ever, ever been one documented case where these aliens, extraterrestrials, 
came from a planet outside of Earth's sphere. In other words, the scientists have never watched any kind of a spaceship coming from a distance far away to Earth, and then there be the UFO sightings. So it actually is a localized phenomena. And so since it is localized, then we go to the scriptures. And we have to hear what the scriptures have got to say about such things that are around the earth. Now, we know that God has made all things visible and invisible. And because he has made all things visible and invisible, we aren't privy to the invisible things unless, unless they want us to see them. Okay? Uh, be that angels or demons, doesn't matter. That's the way it is. But we've got God's word, and we know that from the book of Revelation, particularly chapter 12, we get the word that says that there was war in heaven. And uh, Michael and his angels fought against the devil and his angels. Uh, the devil wasn't strong enough, and, and so forth. We know that the devil was able, the text talks about his tail taking a third of the angelic beings with him when he uh, was kicked out of heaven. But that's one cycle. We, we've been learning that prophecy is cyclical. In other words, things that happen can come around again. Not exactly the same, but like the first happening. Okay? So we know that there are three heavens, right? The first heaven is the sphere, the atmosphere around Earth. The second one is the one between the atmosphere around Earth and right before third heaven. The third heaven is where God dwells. We know there are three because... Paul visited the third heaven. He speaks in terms of, I know a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, but he you know, got to see things in the third heaven, things that cannot be uttered on the earth. But we also know that the space between the third heaven and the first heaven is occupied by these un clean spirits because Daniel when he was fasting and praying for 21 days he found out that the prince of Persia in other words an angelic being demonic angelic being over the Persian empire resisted the answer God was sending to him from the throne of God down to where Daniel was. Because it's in the text. The angel came and said, the prince of Persia resisted me for 21 days, and it wasn't until Michael, your angel, in other words, the angel in charge of Israel, came to help, that this other angel, this other messenger, was able to get past the angelic being resisting the answer getting to Daniel, and he was able to get through to Daniel. Okay? So we know that there are these three heavens. Well, one of the things that we do know is that that same passage from Revelation chapter 12. You know, we know that what's happening is this war in heaven. Now it's in the second heaven. What's happening is God is cleaning house, so to speak. And he's going to cleanse the second heaven. But the way he's cleansing the second heaven, when Michael and his angels overcome the devil and his angels, the devil and his angels are cast down to earth. And we're told in that text that the devil is not happy. He is filled with fury because he knows his time is short. Now, he may be filled with fury, and we know he's going to be filled with fury, but that doesn't mean he's going to stop his deceptive, diabolical ways. 
he's going to do whatever he can now on earth that he possibly can to deceive more people. So now coming to earth, he's going to, uh, there will be the Antichrist, there will be the first beast, there will be the second beast. The second beast, as I've mentioned before, which totally, you know, mess up with our mind. The second beast is also the eighth king and the false prophet. You just read the text of Revelation and, and you can connect the dots. Okay? The devil is going to give his authority to the false prophet and the false prophet is going to be able to do all kinds of signs, lying wonders, and miracles. Okay? He is going to set himself up, the first beast, up as Christ, but a false Christ. Now, the reason why we need to know this is because it's coming. We don't know exactly when. Uh, Putnam and Horn, it has been, you know, uh, relayed to them. It could be as early as this year. And we know that you know, the earth, people of the earth, are just going to go nuts over this. Some people, some people are going to be so excited about them coming because, you know, some people are already, there has been Catholic priests who have written about our alien brothers. Okay? Some are going to simply just, you know, accept them hook, line, and sinker. That's a problem. That's a problem. It is a deception already. Demons. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But see, that's what people have used. Well, that's right. And these are these. Yeah, you think sci-fi stuff, but on the other hand, the sci-fi stuff is conditioning people to receive them. Yeah, exactly. But okay. Are yes, and so what? What these fellows have learned is that there has been nothing outside of our locality in the you know solar system where these things have been seen anywhere, and so this is how I got to Gibeonites and the Gibeon people right. is that it's a ruse. It's a ruse. So they're close. They are close. They're going to be pretending from being far, far away when they're not. In fact, uh, these guys have followed the, uh, what abductees have said about where these guys have said they've come from, where these things have said they've come from. And what has happened is, is that the farther people on Earth are able to look out into the universe, and into the stars, the farther they say they're from. First they were, you know, from somebody, you know, Venus or Mars or whatever. But now, you know, Alpha Centauri or, or whatever, it's getting farther and farther away so that their credibility can't be checked out. So it's very interesting. It's a ruse. Yeah. They're very close. They are the devils in the scripture. The reason why we need to know is because of what they're planning to do. It's still, the, it's still the scriptures. The scriptures have already warned us. I mean, the word of God is so awesome. Yeah. It is so awesome. Uh, God has said that he knows the end from the beginning and he has revealed it to us. Okay? And the reason why he has done that he says in his word so that nobody can come back and say, oh, well, I knew that a long time ago, or what have you. In fact, he will tell the so-called gods, the idols, he will say to them, I think Isaiah was one of the ones who wrote this for the Lord, speaking for the Lord. The Lord said, hey, tell us what is going to happen or what is coming so that we might believe in you. So, that can't happen. But the Lord in his word has already told us what has happened and what will happen so that nothing is going to be able to surprise us. 
So that's, that's why we got to know. Um, now granted, uh, I think I would have to admit that I would be, you know, I would, I would have to say that I'm not one person who would normally read about aliens, okay, or alien encounters or anything like that. Um, and so picking up Chuck Missler's books or uh, Thomas Horn, Chris Putnam, you know, that was a stretch for me. It really was. Um, but when I got into it and saw what they were seeing with the amazing interviews they were being allowed to have with some of these people from the observatories and their, you know, their understanding of God's word, uh, what, they, what they have revealed is very helpful. It's very helpful. So no, I mean, these things are going to be called or they're going to be touted as alien saviors. They're going to be, you know, the ETs, extraterrestrials, who uh, have, and I've, I've said this in the other messages, is that they've evolved beyond us and they're here to help us, you know, evolve as well. Uh, there truly are scientific uh, experimentation going on really in many, many places. Um, Crossbreeding hybrids between human and animal. And those things are going to be a, a problem. Okay? They really have happened already. How, you know, how far they're allowed to live, that's questionable. But um, Jesus told us that it will be as in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Well, in the days of Noah, we know that people were marrying and being given in marriage and so forth and so on, and they were not paying a whole lot of attention, and they were all washed away when the flood came. But Genesis 6 tells us exactly what was going on. And Helen's already looking at me going, oh, she's going there. But what was happening in Genesis 6 and why God looked at the earth and it was just terribly wicked was the text tells us that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful. And they took wives among them, whoever they would, and they had children by them, and their children were giants. They were the men of renown, the people of old, the Gibberim, or the Nephilim. Okay? These were hybrids the hybridization of people with angelic beings. Okay? In other words, these angels went after strange flesh. Human flesh. Now, I don't know the biology behind it. All we know is what the Word of God tells us. Is that it happened. Yes, these are fallen angels. These would not be God's good angels. They did not, the God's good angels are not going to be going after strange flesh. They are going to stay in their place. These are, God, these are the fallen angels who go after the strange flesh. They cohabit with women. They have children by them. And they are the Nephilim, the, 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 the giants, the, the, the men of renown. Now the text tells us in Genesis chapter 6, ch chapter 6 verse 4, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward. And also afterward. Okay? God wipes them all out with the flood. Now the reason that is given for Noah and his family being spared is when God looked at him, he was blameless in his generation. And apparently that word blameless goes all the way into the man's DNA and he did not have a blood mixture, a DNA mixture of, the, of these angelic beings. But he says, these were on the earth and afterward. Remember, when Moses sends the 12 spies over the, the Jordan River to spy out the promised land? The guys came back and he said, 
the Nephilim are there, or the Anakites, and we look like grasshoppers to them. Because they were really huge, right? Yes. And of course, we know that Goliath was nine and a half feet tall, and he had four brothers. King Og of Bashan, his bed, I think, was 18 feet long. Um, I think I might be a few feet too long on that, but it wasn't a normal bed, okay? So Jesus says that as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. People were marrying, being given in marriage. Well, you know, if, there were, if it was normal marriage and being given in marriage, what's notable about that? However, if it's this other thing going on, that's notable. That's notable. Well, I personally have a problem with people who are abducted because I've I've never believed it. No, I mean, really, I've never believed it. Yeah. Yeah. Deborah, is that... You sit there and go, no, no, no. What's your question? (laughs) T-Rex. T-Rex. Anyway, unfortunately, Carol, uh, as far as... She never has believed in abductions. No. What? Abductions, people being abducted by aliens... There ha- I mean, there really has been physical evidence that people have been abducted, and uh, they've been abducted for the purpose of harvesting DNA. Well, then, Revelation 9. What is Revelation 9? It makes make it more sense because it talks about locusts that look like horses, and let's see, their faces were human, their hair was like wolf's hair, and teeth were like lion's teeth. Yeah. And yeah, Revelation 9, those locusts look kind of weird, but... And then over here, let's see, where was that side? Oh, the power of the horses was in their mouth and in their tails, but their tails were like snakes. Yeah. Having heads and their face like injury. So, yeah, I mean, there really are, there are medical, there's medical proof uh, that, that these things have happened. Now, here's the thing. Lest you get worried... What does it have to do with us now? I would say, okay, what does that have to do with us now? It's important to know that it's happening, has happened, will happen. Keep it in the back of the mind when you start hearing and reading really weird stuff. Because don't you know, and I know we all know this, that the media is going to be all over this. And they're going to be excited about it. The DNA, what does that have to do with us? No, don't worry about that. That's not what I'm mean. don't, don't I mean that that you don't have to worry about. One of the things that you that, that you need to know that as believers, this doesn't touch us, the DNA stuff. It doesn't touch us because we are believers. But but but, but what's important for us to know is that um, it is going to happen and it will be touted as, some, as a superhuman, this is where we all need to go, and there will be deception to go that direction, and so forth. But we've been told ahead of time, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Res- yeah. Well, and of course we know that the resisting could cause our death. That's okay. We're told, don't fear the one who can kill the body. Okay? So, the fact that we all are believers in Christ Jesus, that does protect us. But there are plenty of people who aren't protected. Now, these people will need to be delivered, most likely. Yes. And potential believers... Yes, potential believers are hugely affected. Tom Horn, his, his sister, was abducted. And, and at that time, she wasn't a believer. But it was as soon as she became a believer that they left her alone, which is why he kept being led to believe these aren't aliens from another planet. These are demons. That's why we have to stand firm, and I believe, because all these things that are going to happen people from the news or whatever will say, will point you disbelief of creation, disbelief in God, disbelief in Christianity. And yes, we stand firm, we believe. But those who we were trying to get the good news to, 
they are affected by this. Yes, situation. yes, they are very much affected by so this. So we have to be able to, to combat that. With yeah, and you know, one. I mean, it, it may sound really kind of strange, I suppose, but but when you're going to have people who are going to be taken in by this these lies, hook, line, and sinker, we've got to be able to go to the word and say, no, this is the truth. So we have to know what the lie is going to be in order to be able to tell the truth to combat the lie. Okay. So it's knowing the enemy so that you can combat the enemy. Yes, the Holy Spirit is, of course, going to keep working and working and working. And so, uh, so that's, that's the reason. It, 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 it's, it's, it affects us because we're witnesses. And there's going to be an overwhelming, probably, push by governments, some in the church, uh, media scientists, you know, to head everybody toward this. And, you know, we think now that this book and those who hold dear to it are um, laughed at. Just wait till then. Um, it'll be worse. But we hold on to it, okay? It isn't to be feared, it is knowledge to have to combat what's going to happen. That's what it's all about. That's why the two messages. My job as a pastor is to prepare, is partly to prepare everybody for what's coming. Sure, my job is to preach the gospel. But my job is to preach the entire word from Genesis to Revelation. Even the parts that we just as soon go, oh, look at that. I don't want to go there. <laughs> you know, that's my job. Okay? Because it doesn't do anybody any good if I hold something to the side and don't tell people about it. It does nobody any good. I, do you all understand that? Yeah, we don't need just the good stories. Yeah. I mean, you know, we all know the good stories. Yeah. But the that we have the good news come back. Absolutely. 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 And, um, you know, one of the things that um, I did ask the Lord, well, what do, you, what do you want me to tell them today other than this? Do you all have any other questions or is this good enough for now? And then you all can pepper me with questions later. You all are still all kind of smiling going, can't believe she's doing this to <laughs> Go on there. But you know what your job is to have you really, I mean, you know, when you first came, we don't even know what sons of God meant. Remember? In fact, we didn't even know it was in the Bible. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, and you know, and a son of God, well, and a son, you know, a son of God is anybody who has a direct, who is directly, directly created by God. Okay, so all of the angels were direct creations of God. Adam was a son of God because he was a direct creation of God. Jesus is the only begotten son of God because he is the begotten son of God. Okay? We are adopted sons of God because we came in to God's family by faith in Jesus. Okay? But the angels are the sons of God uh, because they are a direct creation of God. Now, I did ask God what he wants me to tell you today. And you'll be happy to know that he says, I love him. Tell him I love him. Now, I've told you that before. He just likes to remind us that he loves us. And this is the passage he gave me. It's from Romans chapter 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nobody. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God loves us, 
and he is able to keep us from stumbling in the days ahead. That's the good news. He is able to keep us from stumbling in the days ahead. And, uh, you know, he is true. His word is true. He cannot lie. Okay? He loves us. And that's the, that's the little message he wanted me to give you today other than the Q&A that I wanted to give you because that's my pastoral responsibility to allow y'all to ask the questions that you have uh, so that, you know, you don't get confused or concerned. Okay? That's my job. And so God loves us. He is able to keep us from stumbling. No matter what's out there to try to get us to stumble, he is able to keep us from stumbling. So, amen and amen. <laughs>